Hey folks, doing here of none here, going over the 5.3.0 patch notes on the PTS right now for Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, starting the Dark Heart of Skyrim and the Heterostorm DLC game pack, which is DL Dungeons. Uh, we're going to go again through some of these items. Basically, as an overview, I'm not going to get too deep, wrapped up in the details. Things like numbers, all that other stuff changes as people test this out on PTS and shake out the numbers. Understand as well that some things may or may not be working on the PTS as expected. Make sure, of course, to always enter in bug reports and don't just complain about it on YouTube or Twitch if you have issues with those. Uh, we are doing this live right now, so I may be answering some questions in chat for you YouTube folks who are reviewing this afterward, but I will try to stay on topic as much as possible. That doesn't always happen, though. So, first, let's go ahead and take a look at the patch notes. Yay! Okay, so 5.3.0. Welcome to Elseworlds Online version 5.3.0 and the start of the Dark Heart of Skyrim and the Hellstorm DLC game pack. Hellstorm is, introduces two new four-player four, four dungeons, Ice, Ice Reach and Unhallowed Grave. In addition, a number of new item sets and collectibles. Our biggest focus of this update is to improve the gaming performance. So with this an emphasis on frame rate, frame rate stability, ultimately resulting in a fewer drops from the game's frame rates. The combat changes you'll, be, you'll see support this in-game, which you see, read more about in the forum posts. In addition, please take note, uh, da -da -da -da, we're refreshing this patch and the file manifest database to remove duplicate files and older data no longer needed. This is a much, uh, this will result in much, uh, this will result in major improvements to load times, uh, streaming of your assets, reliability of asset loads, uh, reduction in space and clients. In order to achieve this, you have to re-download the entirety of the game for PTS, which I had to do already. Uh, to this end, the size of this update is 68.55 gigabytes. Note, you will not have to delete anything manually. Just let the patcher run on its own. So that's the first good news here. They are going to be reducing size. They're going to be streamlining things. And hopefully we're going to see less time on load time. Uh, from what I saw on PTS, it's already kind of seems faster, but we've already seen, we see that typically we're going to PTS. There's less people on there, less load. It is a, probably a weaker server than live as most PTS servers are. But if it's going to be better or not on, when it hits live, we'll have to see. It's, it's always... It, what we do on PTS that never matches what happens in production, it seems. So, new features, new updates, DLC packs, case game packs, templates, updates, unknown issues, key fixes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip over a lot of the cosmetic stuff here, if that's all right, guys. And we're going to get us all into the Ice Heart. Or sorry, not Ice Heart. Uh, into the new dungeons here. Ice Reach. Why did you say Ice Heart? I'm thinking of the, the, I think I'm thinking of the uh, armor set there. So Ice Reach is hidden among the churning waves of the a Sea of Ghosts. A Phrygian island serves to uh, serves the seat of power for most of the cruel Ice Reach Coven. Now lashing, lashing storms swirl around it. Could this be a natural phenomenon or something more sinister? Probably something more sinister. Unhallowed Grave. Long ago, the sources of Bankerai Garrison buried something deep, uh, something away in the accursed cavern. An evil too great to leave unguarded. Now, centuries later, even the most daring Redguard explorers now uh, know to give birth to, uh, give this grave wide birth. All right, so two new dungeons, normal, uh, normal and veteran versions, uh, unique item sets, Monster Helms with it as well. Uh, unique achievements found in these dungeons, including body markings, unique weapon styles, new titles, and unique housing items as well. Uh, we're going to be going over a total of six, six new sets and three new crafted styles because they actually added in crafted sets for PvP. I know, strange, strange that they're adding stuff to PvP, right? But yeah, they added some more in. So first up, Ice Reach. I'll give, a, I'll give a little bit of an idea of what I think about each one of these as we go along, too. Hades Hearth, Light Armor. Magic Recovery, Magic Recovery, Max Magic. When you heal yourself or an ally, give yourself a warming aura for 10 seconds. While in the warming aura, you and your group members restore 1,020 1, health every one second and reduces the cost of sprint, block, and roll dodging by 5%. 
The effect can occur once every 12 seconds. So you can have a total of uh, 10 seconds uptime, two seconds downtime with this. Interesting set. So with this, I think this actually might be, will this be meta for either one? I don't think it's gonna be meta for PVE. Uh, the magic recovery and magicka, not enough. Uh, in addition to that, the sprint and block and roll dodge reduction by 5%. Not that great. However, for Zergs and larger groups inside PvP, I could see this being useful in, in certain cases. Or maybe mix this in with transmutation, uh, giving damage shield. Yeah, I, I, I could see this being useful. Maybe two healers inside of a group there, keeping up, keeping up 100% of the time. Reduction on... Yeah, I could see it. I don't think it's going to be meta for like a lot of the bomb groups, but for Zergs... Might, might see some people using it. Tightboard Strike, the Media Armor set. Physical Penetration, Weapon Damage, Stamina, and adds one th 110 Weapon Damage and 12, uh, 1240 Physical Penetration. It doubles at 50%, or no, sorry, it doubles at se uh, under 75%, and quadruples at 50%. So... Interesting set here. I think the quadruple one is one of the major ones here. 440 weapon damage plus 4,960 physical penetration. Uh, Stand blades probably would use this. I would probably. Oh, what could you work this with? I, I want to say they could work this with. I want to say you could work this with Alchemist, but you have to be careful because you don't want to use a healing potion with Alchemist here. Instead, you probably want to be using uh, weapon power crit or crit pots of some type. You know, I'll say this. I'll probably say this would probably be best on a... Probably on a Sork. Sork with the damage shields, I think we get the best benefit out of this. But you still probably need a lot of health stack down there. Necro might work out pretty well too. Uh, it's interesting with this as well because you take a look at this set here, and I mean, I'm like, I'm actually think of a few other sets there that work like this, where the lower your health, the better it comes off. But those other sets don't work well with that. Uh, one is Pariahs. This comes out of Rothgar. You get more armor and more spell resistance by having lower health. But with this, you want to be stacking up more damage. Uh, because you're looking to get the enemy killed here before you die, hopefully. Uh, in addition to that, uh, let me see if I can find it here. There's a new one coming out that came out recently with uh, Southern Elsewhere. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, Southern Elsewhere. Uh, gain 3,000 or 300 weapon damage and spell damage while your health is over 50%. So in that 75% range, it's good. Uh, but once you go below 50% here, you're going to get 3,480 physical and spell resistance for that but it's not going to be stacked on to your it's not going to be stacked on with everything else there so what could you pair this off with i'm not sure uh i wouldn't pair this off with spriggans you got a lot of physical penetration with that <sighs> i don't know i i do think this is going to be a meta pvp set in some way i'm just not sure how yet but because just you can't ignore that damage that's just a lot even if you're below 50 percent health there's a lot of ways to mitigate that, just either with having fast travel or being able to cloak yourself out of situations where you're when you're in execute range. Baddies Torment, heavy armor. Warp set healing taken. Oh, I know. Pair this, with, pair this off with Fury. Fury, yeah, that would probably make the most sense. Sorry. Uh, Baddies Torment. Healing taken, health, stamina. Uh, when you taunt nearby enemies, it tethers you for five seconds. While tethered, you apply minor maim to your enemy or major maim to your enemy, reducing the damage done by 30%. And you gain major vitality, increasing your healing taken by 30%. This tether is broken when the enemy moves eight meters away from you. This threat can occur once every 14 seconds. So five second uptime or yeah, so five second uptime, 14 seconds. So you're going to have eh, roughly nine seconds downtime with that. Still, major maim on an enemy is pretty good. There's only a few abilities out there that can give major maim. 
In addition to that, you also get major vitality, so you can heal yourself pretty good. Definitely feel like this is going to be used for free PvP a lot. Uh, anytime you have a tanky type build, uh, dueling might work out pretty well as well. Though it is, a, it is a major time gap there. Nine seconds is a long time to keep yourself guarded. But still, major vitality, so you get extra healing on top of that while your enemy's also doing 30% less damage. Your health's going to be ping-ponging up and down. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> dueling, I'd say it's good. 1VXing, I don't know if that would be too great. The vitality would keep you up, but you're only going to do... You're only get the, you're gonna get this minor ma major maim on one enemy, so probably wouldn't be, but eh, we'll see. Uh, for PV, uh, no PVE, I can't see this being used. There's, it doesn't give too much benefit to the group, uh, and you can already mitigate enough damage not to have to really worry. To you don't have to really worry about the major maim or the vitality. You already get healed enough, and you already reduce damage enough, so. Yeah, I feel this is going to be PvP-based, if anything. Finally, Mother's uh, Chinati Chin Monster Mask. Max Magia, and while in combat, casting the, ability, uh, casting the ability with cast time or channeling ability grants you a damage shield that absorbs 3,000 damage for 10 seconds. This is a fucking curl once every 10 seconds. So you could basically have something that gives you a damage shield whenever you cast a damage shield. But it's only 3,000, and that's going to be reduced to 1,500 inside PvP. I really don't understand why they went with that. That doesn't seem like a great set here. Uh, this kind of reeks of Hatchling Shell here. I'll let me pull up the stats on this one here real quick. So Hatchling Shell. Gain a damage shield of 20% of your max health every 15 second, uh, for 15 seconds every 15 seconds. Yeah, it's, it reeks of the same thing. And I just don't see that being that useful. I, I think this is probably going to change, if anything. 3,000 damage, it's not going to be It's not going to be meta for PvE. It's probably not going to be meta for anything that's PvP-based, either. Unhollow Grave. This is the vampire one, I believe. Uh, Durkin's Grip, Light Armor. Max Magica, Spell Penetration. Magica Recovery. Uh, deals direct damage to enemies that has 10% chance to place a ghostly curse on the enemy for 6 seconds. Cursed enemies take an additional 530 extra damage from all the damage abilities. This so effect can occur once every 6 seconds. So it says all my damage abilities. Does that include dots? Is the question. Second question, it says extra damage. Now is that Spell damage? Is that physical damage? Is that oblivion damage? What What's going to affect it on the mitigation end is the other question here. Because, uh, again, this could be spell damage here where that's going to have to go through that, uh, that's going to have to go through, through that armor. Or this could be oblivion damage, which could be kind of overpowered because you're basically working uh, unmitigated damage directly to the enemy. Now, is this going to be useful in PvP or PvE? Depends if it's going to be workable on dot builds. If it's if this adds 530 to every dot that you place on an enemy, that's going to be major for both PvP and PvE. PvE especially. Uh, PvP, you have uh, Templars are kind of the flavor of the month right now. They already have a lot of benefit and they can just cleanse off most dots. Other folks here, uh, can't say for certain. We'll have to see. But it, yeah, if this is works with dots, definitely a set that you're going to want. If it doesn't work with dots, probably not enough damage here, from what I can see. 530 extra damage just to direct abilities. Direct abilities you can basically get maybe two per second. So you're looking at an extra two per second on top of that six seconds at most yeah that's like an extra thousand damage at most if if you're not doing it you're better off going with uh, uh not sororias but the other one that are from cloud rest i just can't remember it all right aegis collar medium armor weapon damage stem recovery weapon damage 
Uh, when you deal critical damage with melee abilities, summon a lesser Aegis for 12 seconds. That's those little uh, floating air astronaut kind of the eyes there. Uh, after 2.5 seconds, Lacer a Aegis spins its blades, dealing 4,880 bleed damage every one second. So if I can occur once every 10 seconds. Hmm. So you summon it, it puts it up there. By the time it finally goes off, it's going to be starting to do 4,000 on top of that. So you're definitely you're going to have at least 2.5 down, uh, 2.5 second downtime for it, right? Then 10 seconds every 10 set every 10 seconds you get this extra 4,000 bleed damage. I could see this being useful. I mean, it is a bit of damage here. Is it going to be better than Reliquins? Mm, not sure but yeah i think th i think that is a pretty good amount of damage i don't think it's gonna be useful for pvp so much because the aegis you're gonna be able to move around dodge uh and that bleed again is not mitigated it's bleed is mitigated now so it's not as good as it used to be but i still think that can actually be pretty useful in addition to that, it says Splendid Blade, which tells me it's an AoE effect. So, useful in trash mobs, possibly, as well. Grave Guardian, heavy armor. Stamina, health, health. Summon a stone aura of, while blocking, harding you and your nearby group members. Increasing your physical and spell resistance by 4,430. Okay, this right here is definitely something I see being used in PvP. Anytime that you're blocking, you're automatically increasing physical and spell resistance. You're not giving major or minor resolve. You're just increasing the resistance hard out. In addition to that, you're doing it while blocking, which makes it so much easier. You just can turn it on or off. You don't even have to be taking damage. You just block and you're just automatically giving people spell resistance. That's probably going to change by the end of PTS. I can't see that going on. They're probably going to make it so that... It, they're probably going to make it so that you have to block an attack to activate the aura. Otherwise, it's going to be way too overpowered, I think. Uh, for PvE, I don't know. An off tank could use this and could improve their their main tank's offensive, uh, their, their mitigation here without having to do anything else other than just hold block. So an off tank could use this, I, I could see. And it would also help to benefit the group during hard fights. So like the Zomology fight downstairs, you had an off tank with this, depending on what the range is, could really help them as well. So uh, yeah, I could see this being used for both PvP and PvE, but I really do think it's going to be nerfed by the end. Finally, uh, Kalanjar's Nightmare, Monster Mask, Spell Damage, and when dealing light attacks with the bo uh, puts bone stacks on your enemy for 5 seconds. You can only apply one stack every one second. After five stacks, an undodgeable skeleton hand attacks your enemy for one second, knocking them in the air and stunning them for three seconds, or dealing 14,500 magic damage that cannot be, uh, if they cannot be stunned. An enemy has reached five stacks and not gained bone st stacks for three seconds. Hmm... Yeah, I, I think this would be this would definitely be a PvP type uh, type uh, monster helm. It's very easy to get four stacks on, and then on top of that, you just you just put a CC at the last one there, guaranteeing that you're going to be hitting somebody. You're going to CC someone down, and you're going to have a guaranteed fourteen thousand kit on top of them. And then you yeah, that's a good burst right there. So yeah, definitely PvP mask. I don't know if this is enough to make it good for PvE, but it's a good, it is a good amount of damage. And it does work with light attacks, so it would work with weaving. So, yeah, I would definitely say this is going to be more meta, meta mask of the uh, two. Now, Cyrodiil Crafting. So these are sets that are going to be inside of Cyrodiil that you guys can pick up, build, make yourself. Critical Repose, load, located in Valtress. Critical resistance, 
max health, critical resistance. Interesting that we see more sets with critical resistance on top as well. Uh, the last one that we had is impregnable armor, which you can only get on the five piece. Seeing it actually added into the two to four piece, interesting. It, it, it can help, but this can help balance out some of those low B builds. When you take critical damage, you apply major uncertainty and major evisceration on an enemy for four seconds, reducing the physical and spell critical by 13,000 and reducing the critical damage by 10%. An enemy can only be affected by critical repulse once every second, seven seconds. <coughs> so four second uptime, three second downtime. It depends upon them hitting you with a critical. But I think this could still, I think this will still be used in Zergs, not so much in solo play. Uh, especially when you have like a huge, a huge group that you're going against there. They're laying down a lot of AOE. One person inside the group just stepping into it and giving these debuffs right before they go in for a major hit. Definitely not nice. <laughs> I think that, uh, though, I think that a lot of times you probably want to have more penetration, more damage, more criticals yourself just to get, get enemies out of the way. I still think that a lot of the major groups, the 24-man groups that are out there are going to be using this. And they're probably going to use it against smaller groups as well. Sorry, Jay. <laughs> Unchained Aggressor, located in Bruma. Stamina, stamina recovery, weapon damage, and spell damage. After breaking free, gain major berserk for 9 seconds. Increase your damage done by 25%. So if that can occur once every 21 seconds. Hmm. Interesting set. 9 second burst with major berserk is interesting. Only thing, other one I can think of is um, Hemjoss. Set, which requires that you kill somebody to get Major Berserk. But it does increase all damage done by 25%. I think, that, I think this might be useful. Mm. But again, it requires that you break free to get that Major Berserk. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence about this one being any useful. I mean, you have to you have to know the you have to know the enemy's cadence and when they're going to be putting a putting something on you that needs to break break free. In addition to that, the break free after these last few patches has been really wonky. That I'd I'd say that you're taking a huge risk with it because right now break free it seems like you can't even like it, it takes like two seconds or three seconds to get yourself out of it instead of like anything else there. So if you're breaking free and if that break free is like during that, that first two seconds is already shaved away because of it. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't use this myself here, but somebody might come up with a build for it. Finally, Dauntless Combat uh, Combatant located in Crossford. Stamina, health, magicka, health. When you're affected by disabling effects, you automatically break free at no cost. After using this effect, you become winded and cannot re-trigger it for 21 seconds. Yeah, I could see a tank, tank build using this. You, get, you got the major stats here. And then you got, like, just a free break free without having to get yourself out of it. And then it, re it refreshes every 21 seconds. You can hold block long enough to get yourself out of that. Yeah, so this, this will probably be used by tanky builds here. So, new collectibles and dies. Uh, so, the collectibles obtained through the. Yep, that's all good. Achievements and titles Stormfoe, Witch Hunter, Bone Colors, Bane, and Sanctifier. New furnishings. Yep. Okay, base game improvements. Performance. Optimization of multi thread implementation and improvement of performance in situations where a lot of effects, particles, effects, weather, etc., happen at the same time. Okay, one good optimization. Optimization specific processes, um, optimize specific processes. Pardon me, I'm here while I put my glasses off. That would cause spikes resources and cause FPS drops. So we'll try that and uh, we'll try out Deshaun, Grant Wood, 
some of the DLC dungeons, which had, or not DLC dungeons, DLC areas, they were having major FPS drops and see if we have uh, improvement. If you guys have any ideas about where I should look, let me know. Uh, paralyze the fixture update process, allowing the utilization of multiple cores to improve overall performance in the game client, which should be good for most modern PCs. Most people should be running a 64-bit PC when running, MO, when running an MMO now, or at least ESO. So, yeah, that does look promising. Added miscellaneous CPU optimizations, including the following. Parallel terrain loading, optimization of tutorial GU uh, GUI, mm, uh, optimization of compass pins, miscellaneous function improvements. All right, looks promising. New PvP campaigns. Four new PvP campaigns. Uh, yeah, this is to help with, uh, this is to help with the meteor mayhem here. Uh, new collectibles, Knights Resolve, Rebuke, Dell Pages, etc. for guided area proofs. New homes, Forge Master's Falls, Thieves Oasis, which I have been loaded up on the PTS already. We'll take a look at those. Also includes a built-in blacksmith station, which is nice. Master its furnishings. Your diagrams. Crown store. Cadwell's Astounding Portal. You can actually summon Cadwell to come in and do jokes, sing songs, etc. It's actually nice. This is one of the things I was really... When they asked what we wanted for PTS, or not PTS, when they asked what we wanted for Crown Store, one of the things I thought of was I wanted to have a bard inside my house, somebody to sing and talk stuff. They added in the music boxes, which kind of worked to the bard, but really, having Cadwell in there is kind of nice. Statues of Pride Akash, which is basically a light... Uh, a light beacon. Undone achievement furnishings, gray reliquies, um, ice coven totems. Prologue quest is loaded on PTS right now as well. So if you guys want to take a look at the new story, anniversary jubilee event, which we'll take a look here in a bit. But yeah, this is a this is the new event here. In addition to that, the co the cake. <laughs> To go with the new vampire DLCs, it, it's very gothic. It's black, black cake with red frosting. I, I love it. Definitely be doing the quest for that. Uh, template information, you guys don't care about that. Art and animation. No NPCs wiggling their eyebrows so when you talk to them. They're not trying to be creepy. They just can't help it. Did you order? Uh, Contracted barrier. The passives have been uh, this passive is disabled on PTS just for now. So we're gonna be work reworking it with block. More information about that's down below. General information: you have issues with characters hidden behind the interacting outfit stations. Yep. Monsters, dungeons, some fixes here. Bangler, scale caller. Audio. Fix the number of voiceover and text mismatches throughout the zones. Timing issues with characters who are speaking uh, to each other. Good to see that. Couple monster changes. Okay, so now combat and gameplay with Necromancers. Due to mecha uh, many mechanical issues with Necromancers engagement with corpses and targeted corpses, the following changes have been made in hopes to alleviate some of the shortcomings. Blast bones and his morse now last six seconds rather than six, five. Skeleton mages and spirit menders and their morse now last 10 seconds rather than five seconds. Improved targeting areas for all tether effects and now and will now link to corpses the closest reticle uh, to and from a much larger radius. Go these changes help to reduce situations that the tether abilities will not grab corpses in the highest combat load. It will make it easier for necromancers to feel the control amount of corpses on the field and when utilizing the corpse generating abilities. Yep. Grave load, bas uh, blast bones. Skeleton from this ability is more so now a leap to uh, leap up to 28 meters after the short delay is spawning in rather than 15 meters. So giving more range. Uh, that means that also in PvP, it means that I think it's going to be 32 bit, uh, 32 range if that's the case as well. Uh, given the reach uh, passive. Fixed an issue with the skeleton will now appear to jump backwards when leaping in close range. Skeleton will now properly attempt to face its target when leaping, rather than moonwalk <laughs> jumping. Increase the speed of the skeleton jumps. Uh, Boneyard. 
reduce the cost of the ability from 3,780 uh, down from 4,950. Makes sense. Clone Tyrant, Red Harvest. Uh, dead, in pain, uh, dead in Pain. Basic issue with the Mayor Protection for this ability was not extended to if you had Joe Rules Guidance and other durations extended to the bonus. Bone Totem, Agony Totem. Fix an issue where a visual effect of the pure, uh, pure Agony's cooldown indicator would become, uh, would appear in the allies as, uh, who still have the cooldown. The beam of Necromantic Light will now uh, only show when you can activate the synergy. All right, good. Living Death, reanimate. Basic issue with this ability is Morse would not trigger the events uh, that require resurrections to proc. Good, because this was an annoying one. Sometimes, you, sometimes it would come in, sometimes it wouldn't. Housing, questing, dungeons, dungeon improvements, uh, dungeons and group content, uh, draining shock, fabricants, uh, general assembly, yep. Various fixes, various fixes, dungeons, combat, gameplay, monster, skeletal bears, yada yada yada. Yep. Basically, the issue that prevented werewolves from opening thieves trolls if they own thieves guild DLC. Okay. Frostfrost, so we'll keep early fix some of that. So, combat abilities in general. <sighs> Updated the block uh, to be calculated more efficient, uh, efficient on the server. Similar to sprint, set, uh, sets the passive uh, that key off the block while blocking while bracing is more accurate update to transition to active blocking or not. Overall, the core blocking behavior is untouched between mechanics and cost. We'll monitor the forms and other areas of feedback for bug reports. So please make sure to provide feedback of this change and run it any to, uh, into any other strange behaviors or have questions. Activating a block that will animate the ability and the, or attack will now blend the animation more fluidly instead of completely obfuscate the attack. The core mechanic of block canceling remains untouched, but now it will display more, uh, more, previ more of the previous attack's animation before you, your, cancel, uh, your character animates the block. Note that this visual effect of blocking will appear as soon as the block is officially activated, which has been untouched in terms of how long it takes to activate. Okay, something I want to mention here as well. I keep on calling to end animation canceling. I'm not saying to end the speed of the current animations or anything else of that. It is exactly what, this is exactly what I'm talking about here. Make it so the animations stop looking so goddamn clunky. If, if, if you're going to do an ability, give me an idea that the ability went off and then show me the block that happened afterward here. This is talking about doing a transition and stopping this like weird, like the ability like half goes off and then you automatically go up into a block so you don't even know what hit you at the time. Yeah, so I like this, this particular one here. Hopefully this is going to end what I call animation canceling and lead to more animation transitions and make it a little bit easier to understand what the hell is going on from enemy players. So, sorry about that rant. But anytime we talk about stopping animation canceling, people are like, you're gonna, you're gonna make it slower in combat? And like, no, no, no. Make it just as fast, just, just make it fluid. Right here, fluid. Make it transition, make it actually look like it's part of the game, instead of having it look like it's a glitch. Makes an issue where you can activate block when you don't have any stamina or any or actually block the next attack. You will now need to have adequate resources to base on your block cost in order to activate and successfully block the next attack. Attacks that reduce your stamina to zero will continue to remove block after you successfully mitigate the effect. In some cases, the secondary effect like bleed occurs, the bleed will still be applied. This, uh, this is currently not intended and we'll be adjusting it in the future. All right, so this is another good one. It's just going to be annoying for certain tanks out there that work off no block, especially for PvP tanks that kind of work like on a very minimal budget. But basically, if you don't have stamina, you're not able to block the attack how it should be. Right now, if you have a little bit, of, if you have a little bit in your stamina pool, you can still block attacks without having anything there. So this actually makes it so 
if I understand this correctly, you have to have the stamina to be able to block the attack now. In addition to that, if you have if your stamina gets to zero, the other effects that occur after the effect attack right now seem to be occurring. That's supposedly going to be fixed. We'll see though. Attacks that reduce your, um, reduce your stamina to zero, continue to remove block will after you successfully the effects. Effects that normally would mitigate via block, though, in this scenario, will no longer cancel their effects since you are, it, the ability to block has been removed. Fix an issue where the single target charge, leap, or teleport ability would not remove targets from stealth or invisibility when you had a detection pot potion active. That's a good one. Fix an issue where damage over time effects were gaining the effectiveness of stealth bonuses, such as guaranteed crit chances or stunning targets. Yeah, that's going to affect Nightblades. Especially those Nightblades that are going in and out between Cloak. Like, heavy attack, Cloak, heavy attack, Cloak. That's going to affect a lot of them. Uh, fix many issues where sources of healing could be dodged or blocked when, the source, when sourced from item sets or NPC abilities. Good to see. Bash now probably cancels channeled abilities when you do not have a target, that, target to successfully Bash. I don't really understand this one here. The bash now probably cancel. Uh, bash now probably canceled. Uh, now probably cancels channel abilities. I, okay. Are they talking about my canceled abilities or the enemy's canceled abilities? Cancels channel abilities when you do not have a target to successfully bash. I gotta have to ask for clarification on that one. If they're talking about like, okay, I do bash to cancel my abilities. That makes sense. And they're talking about an enemy having their ca their channel abilities. How do I not have a successful target to bash? Hmm. Weird. The following thorns abilities now, uh, um, or damage return based abilities now have a centimeter range of their effects rather than infinite ranges. Uh, spiked armor and morphs, living arm, uh, dark snare, uh, spiked bone armor. Makes sense. You got to be somewhere close, right? Summon pets for uh, summon pets from player abilities such as summon summon unstable familiar will now have more consistent with the other abilities uh, when they enter deep water, which means they will no longer deal damage or heal while in the state. Leaving deep water will return these pets to default state, in some, with uh, which in some cases may require the ability to be reactivated. All right, so a sort can't just go into water and be the only one that can do damage. Uh, fix an issue where some leap and charge abilities uh, cannot be cast while mobilized. I I don't think that was a major issue, really. Just saying. I mean, should you be able to crit charge if you're rooted? I don't think you should. If you're talking about the loop, if you're, if we're talking about the Dragonite leap ability that removes all snares and and debuffs like that, yeah, that one makes sense to remove those abilities. But like crit charge, I thought that, that was ca proper counterplay, right? Maybe I'm thinking about it wrong. Basically, an issue where leap and charge abilities would remove would move your character the odd ways if you ha cast a one hit or cast an ability in close range. Okay, so if you're too close or something like that, if it would like path you differently. All right. Up to the control and responsiveness of many charge and leap abilities so they can reach fast moving targets more reliably, as well as allow you to take action more fluidly when ca after casting them. That's a good thing. Yeah. There always seem to be like this weird like delay after you used an, after you use a charge ability. Uh, but I always kind of thought it was more because well, depends on what we talked about. Crit Rush always had a delay. Uh, the Nightblade Teleport Strike didn't seem to have that same delay. You could automatically go straight into an attack afterward. But like certain certain abilities that you use crit, like I want to say any target abilities that you tried using after using a crit charge, for example, would seem delayed. So hopefully this is going to alleviate some of that, make it a little bit easier. In addition to that, having the fact that it's going to be 
update on the responsiveness and maybe even speed it up so you can actually catch somebody on a mount with it is very nice. Right now, if you don't have a ranged ability inside Cyrodiil, you're not catching up to a lot of those folks. You're probably still not catching up to them, but it's nice to see you have a chance. Uh, fixing an issue where Leap and other charged abilities would fail to apply their effects if you begin sprinting after activating them. Okay. Off balance will now properly update the size and uh, against the varying target dominies. Okay. Update to off balance to be more consistent with the content in the game. Off balance now lasts seven seconds from player sourced abilities and sets. Off balance no longer is no longer reapplied to target after 15 seconds once the original source of off balance ends. This cooldown is displayed as a debuff on the targets when, once they are affected. Off balance no longer consumes a targets from heavy attacks or abilities. Okay. Uh, note that the rule may be irrelevant in some areas, such as tutorials, where the core focus is teaching behavior of what off balance does. So what what does this mean? If if I if I cast an off balance an ability on somebody and it lasts for second seven seconds, I can do a heavy attack once on that enemy. They can break free. They have cool, they have a CC immunity for three seconds. They have and since it's not consuming consumed by that heavy attack, I could do another heavy attack within four seconds and get another and get another uh, CC on them. Is that right? That might not be a good change. I think about that more. Buffs and debuffs. Major and minor heroism. These buffs now grant ultimate while in combat. This prevents the buffs from be keeping you in combat longer than intended. Alright. Alright, now the class changes. Dragonite. Argent Flame. Dragonite Standard. Fix an issue where the first three ticks is ultimate and this morphs would appear ha to happen instantaneously. Yeah. I don't know what was up with Standard, but like as soon as you drop it, it seemed to be right when it, sta it, it went off. Draconic Power, Draca uh, Dragon Leap. This ultimate will now apply it, uh, will now properly apply it, animates, sorry. This ultimate will now properly animate to leap to targets regardless of its range, resulting in an overall, in, uh, sorry, more overall reaction time for those who received at, at CVN. <laughs> resulting in more overall reaction time for those on the receiving end of the DK dunked. Of being DK dunked, yeah. Protective scale. This ability is now granted through damage mitigation. This ability is more appropriately described in the tooltip. Okay, makes sense. Earthen Heart. Molten Armaments. Which no one's going to use. Uh, fix an issue with this major brutality granted from this ability could fail to apply to group members in situations like any time that you actually have it slotted because no one's using it. Sorry. No one's good. I don't know anyone who uses Molten Armaments ever. Everyone knows it. Everyone I know goes with the other, ma other, other uh, way or the other morph of this. Stone Fist. Up to this ability and improve the visual storytelling of per cast impact. Stone Fist will now have two, not uh, be two, a uh, two part ability instead of a single instant mid range attack. After this ability, will now stomp the earth, causing a deal damage in the area around you after a short cast time. Generating three tar charges uh, of the ability. After this ability, will now grant you to lob an earthen sphere toward the enemy for 28 meters away for, uh, to take uh, to damage them. So that's going to be affected by PvP's reach passive, which probably means 32 meters uh, around keeps and such. The damage of this is no longer a staggering mechanic. Instead, it's a final. The final charge will stun the enemy upon the. Uh, di uh, upon um sorry the final charge will stun the enemy hit upon damage dealing damage stone giant morph of this this morph remains to stagger the fo uh this morph retains the stagger in the form form to cause targets affected the range attack da, 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 da. why keep it the stagger here A, a target's effect is affected by the range attack to take additional damage. 
Increase the damage taken per stack from 65, or rank 4, up from 45. Okay, so they're, adding, they're keeping the stagger in, but only for the morph. Interesting. I don't know if people... Like, you're going to see these stone fists around, around the person, right? So you're going to avoid the person when you see it come up. In addition to that, it's going to be really wonky to see people trying to weave this in. I, I, PvP, maybe, but PvE? I don't think that's going to be useful, right? Hmm... Take a look at PTS and see if it makes more sense. I don't know if it's going to be great damage, though. I'm still surprised, though, that they they made this change, but they didn't increase the damage. You're you're effectively adding one more ability to get to the next to get to the next one, but you haven't increased the damage at all, right? Sorry, that's strange. Like, why have it? Why the? Why how this is a two piece? It fixes, it fixes the animation, right? But why not have something else affect it, like... It works as a damage shield while it's active, or... It does more damage, because now it's a two-piece, and... Yeah. Doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, there's, this is a small buff to it, but I'm... I'm just confused by all this here, not improving it. Nightblade, Shadow, Consuming Darkness. Fixing an issue with synergy granted from this ability as Morse could, not, uh, could only be activated when a certain health of threshold, which is not previously communicated. It will now be activated at the time you meet your listed requirements and not on cooldown. Okay. Sorcerer, Daedric Summary. Summon Unstable Familiar. Reduce the cost of the spe specially activated ability in the Summon Volfant Familiar uh, down to 3,510 from 4,500. Storm calling, bolt escape, ball of lightning. This an issue where the projectile absorption of the field could persist longer than intended under certain circumstances, which I'd seen a lot of people abusing this actually. Uh, lightning splash, reduce the cost of this ability as warped to 3,780, down from 4,950. Makes sense. Overload, this an issue where toggling this ability would dismount you, and the ability and, and update many sets to probably key off overload and is worse where it was stated it requires heavy attacks. Okay. Templar, Adric Spears. Uh, Sorry, Spear Shards. Or Spear Shards. Reduce the cost of the ability is Morse down to 3,780, down from 4,950. Yep. Don's Wrath, Nova. This ability is Morse now have a negative telegraph where you can properly tell if the heavens are, are being called down to protect you or to smite you. Yeah, this is, you can never tell with Dawn's Wrath these last few patches if it was something that was positive or negative. You always stood out of it if you're in PvP. Restoring Light, uh, Sacred Ground. This passive, this passive no longer snares enemy in its area. Instead, it will increase your block mitigation an addition, additional 10% while standing in the mentioned abilities. Mm. If it's is it is this just is this just the Templar's block, block mitigation or anyone's block mitigation? Because this kind of cements them in as a as a healer or support player for a lot of tanks, if that's the case. Warden, Green Balance, Living Vines, fix an issue where this would slow would slowly turn you into what? Fix an issue would slowly turn you or turn to your target received cast if only they ran out of the field of your vision while activating it. You will now need to snap to the direction it and cast the abilities. Okay, so some type of delay here if you weren't like facing the per facing the person, and now it just snaps you there automatically. I get it now. Winners embrace case of presence. This passive now increases critical damage against enemies and critical healing against allies who have been recently afflicted by a shield status effect. So how are you going to get your teammates affected by chilled shield status effect? Like, you're not going to place it on them, an enemy is, right? Hmm. Weapon. Bow. 
Poison Arrow. Fixing an issue with this ability as Morphs would, uh, would cancel any previous cast abilities, such as uh, cast, cast times or channels. All right. Poison Injection, Morph. This is an issue where the initial hit of this ability is not considered to execute for many proc conditions, such as Sheer Venom. Good. Rapid uh, Fire, Ballista. This is an issue where this ability could continuously break a caster's invisibility. Good. Volley, reduce the cost of the stamp ability from 3,510 down from 4,500. Good. Destruction, destructive touch. This is an issue where the visual effects for this ability's damage over time would fail to refresh when using a lightning staff. Okay. Wall of Elements. Reduce the cost of the ability and its morphs to 3,780, down from 4,950. Makes sense. Uh, fixing numerous issues, improving visual effects uh, for the ability and its morphs. I wonder if they're going to make it so ice, ice Wall of Elements is a little bit easier to see. Because right now, you can't, most people just ignore it when they, when they see it. It doesn't seem to... Most people just like walk through it like thinking it's nothing. Do wield. Blade and Cloak. Reduce the uh, Rudus cost of his ability as Morse down to 3,780, down from 4,950. Boom, Blunt, and Blade. Fixing an issue where the bleed from this passive was not consistent with the proc conditions. Okay. One handed shield abilities. Battlefield mobility. This passive now more accurately describes what it does. Okay. Restoration Staff. Panacea. Life Giver. Fixing an issue where the uh, fix an issue where casting this ability would fail to tr uh, trigger events that require when applying a damage shield, since the ability was automatically cast as a shield. Okay. Two-handed Berserker Strike. Fix an issue where this ability is Morse cannot proc Soul Lock passive. Hmm? Okay. Uh, reduce the damage done by this ability as Morse by by sixteen percent to better account for the fact that it ignores mitigation. Yeah, it, it, this was pretty. This was pretty meta for a lot of uh, one shot builds. Well, not one shot builds, but quick, uh, quick gank builds. Uh, Berserker's Rage Morph. They see fix an issue with this ability not granting immunity to snares or mobilization. Makes sense. Heavy weapons. Fix an issue where the bleed from the past is not consistent with proc conditions. Makes sense. Uppercut. Dizzying swing. This morph now stuns enemies who are. They, they changed Dizzying Swing to give off balance, so now people are still going to be spamming Dizzying Swing just for another swing to get enemies knocked down instead of doing a heavy attack. Like, mm. I thought part of the thing was that you wanted people to be using heavy attacks and rotating stuff in more with Dizzying Swings. I, so you go one way, you go back the other way, I guess. Whatever. Armor. Heavy armor. Unstoppable. Unstoppable Brute, Morph. Uh, the cost of the CC reduction of this ability is now properly linked to major resolve it grants. And will increase, uh, and will increase the duration as bonuses such as Gorville's uh, Guidance, but will be lost if the source of major resolve is applied. If another source of major resolve is applied. Okay. Vampire, Drain Essence. The stun of this ability and its morphs now occurs when the cast is complete rather than when it began. Hmm. Like part of the part of the reason that you had the stun on this to begin with was so you could have the enemy stun there and you could drain them. Now you're taking it away. So you could be draining the person and they could be they could block they they could bash you to stop your <laughs> to stop you from draining you? Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I I would have I would have just made it so train okay, here's how you change your in essence. Stop stop using it as a channel ability. Maybe make a morph as a channel ability. But it should basically stun the enemy, because that's what people use. Making an instant stun ability that also gives a bit of health back. You don't need to have it as a as a channel. Channels just don't work out that well most times. This is an issue of the casting of this ability in rapid succession would cause you to get stuck and cause the various animation issues. Oh no crap. Werewolf. Face numerous issues, light attack and heavy attacks on werewolf to cause desyncs in the animation of other abilities, such as piercing howl. Good to see. Face an issue where they could stay in werewolf form indefinitely in some areas within trials. Sense. Pounce. 
This is an issue where this ability would fail to properly animate the leap. This results in more time for defenders to respond to the attack as well. Okay. Guild, Mage's Guild, Meteor, Shooting Star. This ability no longer grant ultimate for hitting corpses, right? Uh, Sigic Order, Concentrated Berry. The passive is more will more, uh, more accurately describe its proc conditions. Undaunted, Bone Shield, Bone Surge. This issue with its synergy and its morphs was granting uh, a damage shield rather than it started. Trapping webs, fixing an issue with its ability and its morphs would be considered taking damage over time instead of taking more melee damage in some cases. Hmm. But this is damage over time. Like, they're standing in a field with webs that splashes out poison. Or maybe they're talking about the, the final splash of poison. Yeah, that would make sense. All right, Alliance War Support, Barrier. Fix an issue where the visual effects of the shield would fail to cast and, per and persist on the original shield. is refreshed. Okay. Volendrung. Uh, Volendrung is in the PvP weapon that you pick up while you're in Cyrodiil. If you can manage to ever find it. More likely you're going to get run over by a Zerg. Updated with the damage and scale and modifications of DHR Artifact to be better matched to the standards. Increase the damage of light attacks by 17,000 or 1,700. Increase the damage of Rorkin's Rebuke by 1,500. Malkas Re Revenge by 1,500. Accursed Charge by 1,700. Runa Cyclone by 2,100 per tick. Malkas Wrath. Updated the ability as matches visual effects, uh, resulting in a 7 millisecond cast time, which results in fixing numerous issues where the ability could cause health desyncs or his targets who have appeared to dodge. Uh, Rolkin's Rebrook, updated his ability matches visual effects, refreshing it after six mil or 600 milliseconds cast. It's fixed numerous issues where the ability could cause health desyncs, okay. Runa Cyclone, fixed an issue where his ability could, uh, could pull targets through walls. <laughs> it's kind of hilarious. Uh, fixed an issue where the ability could not properly match visuals, which resulted in a uh, reduced delay of the first attack for uh, 0.5 seconds. Down from two seconds, resulting in a final addition, resulting in three additional ticks per damage. Itemization set and item sets uh, in general. I'll take my key item sets are holding block and bracing due to the terminology of respective topics. Uh, also prevented confusion uh, that were not meant to be working with the abilities that allow you to block without needing to brace, such as shield wall. Drink time. Consumables. Makes your issue with the poisons that dealt damage and consistently with poison status effects. Uh, when compared to damage over time effects, uh, they will allow you to have properly 3% chance to apply the status per tick. Uh, a fix if uh, issues with poisons would not use your highest crit, set, crit strike chance. Attending to drink a potion while unable to drink no longer plays a sound effect that you actually drank the potion since you didn't. Right? Uh, efficient issue where some potions could be activated while stunned. Efficient issue where some poisons would affect proc effects that require poison uh, potion to be consumed. Since you, since you shouldn't be drinking those. Item sets. All right, so these are all base game stuff here. Affliction, uh, efficient issue where minor file had a 15% chance to apply diseased. It will now apply disease status effect instead, since the debuff applies to minor file already. Yep. Archmage now properly triggers off restoration heavy attacks. Ash and grip, no longer forces the character into an animation, protects it against stuck or uh, doing odd behavior. Fix an issue where the set did not properly off, uh, properly trigger off melee attacks. Remove the temp set. Sorry. Uh, remove the. A uh, tap set proc chance and increase the damage uh, to 5,350 from 1,118. So, Ashen Grip, I think that was a crafted set, right? Yeah. 
So we deal direct melee damage. Yeah, 10% chance to do it. If I concur once every four seconds. I think that would be a good chance for newbies. Folks that are just getting into the game. Ariane's Thunder. Uh, update the tool tips to match the actual proc requirement. Uh, fix an issue where the set would not, uh, not work with melee attacks. Decrease the damage to tick per... Sorry. Fixing that there real quick. Uh, decrease the damage of the tick by... Um, to 1,147 from 1,285. Okay. Fireheart. Uh, this set... Set no longer has a hidden one second cooldown after the heal, but the heal has been decreased to 3,000 or 378 down from 609. Makes sense. Increase the weapon damage to 450 from 449 to for a pretty number. Increase the proc chance to 25% from 10%. So I think Briarheart might go back to meta status at this point. A lot of folks already liked it. Uh, the health. The nerf to the health regeneration is not that major. Really, you're doing it for the damage bonus. And that 25% proc chance now, that, that, that looks pretty good. Cloud Vilkerden, well, it looks good. I think, I think, I think, uh, New Moon Alkalite is still going to be meta for a lot of stuff for a little while, but this could combine with one of those other sets. Uh, Kyle Lorcan fixed an issue where this did not proc uh, when using Tri-Focus -fo Passive. Okay. Uh, Clever Alchemist updated this to do an in-combat check with his item set to be more accurate with the client states. Increase the duration of this bonus from 20 seconds up for 15. Uh, potions take about 15 seconds, don't they? Might be thinking wrong. No. I think you can get it down to 15 seconds with, uh, with glyphs, right? So you can possibly overlap it, maybe? Probably not. It'll probably, it'll probably override it if you did. Increase the weapon and spell damage. Uh, bonus to 675 up from 661. So yeah, uh, they made this a little bit better off. So probably going to see more, more PvP builds with uh, Clever Alchemist again. Curse Eater. Basically an issue with this set would uh, fail a proc off ultimates or mend wounds. Uh, this set now has 8 second cooldown per target, rather than overall. Oh, yes. Increase the magic restored from six, uh, 678 up from 600. Fix an issue where this share, share the cooldown of standbars and brace. Okay, yes, yes, yes. This is going to look nice. So, let me pull this set up real quick here. Curse Eater, Curse Eater, where are you? Okay, Curse Eater. When you heal yourself or an ally with a direct heal ability, remove up to three negative effects on them. If, the next place it removes, uh, if a negative effect was removed this way, your target restores 600 magicka. This effect can occur once every eight seconds. <laughs> That's going to be so broken, broken. Okay. This is a set. Uh, this is a set that I was looking at before. I kind of liked, but the problem is it had an, it had a cooldown for like a global cooldown. So you could only use it once per thing here. So it was like, why use it? Cause you're only going to use it once. Now if this is an eight second cooldown per target. You can effectively use this in a group. Just down, just lay down, uh, anything there like it, it, purifying uh hmm no, okay it can only work on direct ones right so healing springs just cast healing springs in an area everyone that has any debuffs in that area just gets removed like you don't have to you like you don't have to use efficient purge you don't have to use uh, uh purifying light three three just removed like that on an eight second cooldown Everyone gets stunned. You just do you just do one healing spring and you bring them all back up so they can move around. Yeah, that's that's gonna be a major one, I think, for a lot of a lot of large groups. P 
PvE or PvP, I think it's going to be pretty major as well. Like, the, the Magic Restored is okay, but just the fact that these are going to be working off any direct heals on, any, on, on your teammates, I think that's going to be major. Maybe I'm wrong. You guys can tell me I'm wrong, but... <laughs> Just the fact that any type of heal, direct heal, will just remove three negative effects, just like that. And yes, it is a eight second cooldown, but that's like if you're doing a push, you do it once, and that's all. That's all you need. Curse of Dolomish. Uh, th this set now properly works on feared targets, reducing set, uh, cooldown from four seconds to seven seconds, increasing damage done from twelve thousand five hundred seven. Uh, up from 12,040. Oh, well, master. Uh, look at that set real quick. Curse of Dolomesh. When you hit, when you hit a ton of monster with a fully charged heavy attack, or any other. Da, da, da. Okay, so you have to taunt the enemy, and it didn't work before on. I don't know if it's going to be meta anytime soon, but it's interesting. Dara Brock, fix an issue with this, uh, with this set could activate shield wall or its morphs, morphs were active. Okay. Destructive Mage. This set's explosion damage now will trigger it on heavy attack rather than only on allies. Reduce the cooldown of the application by four seconds down from 10 seconds. Decrease the damage done from the explosion uh, from 6,575 down from 7,500. 7, mm. Triggered by a heavy attack? Um, I'm not sure about that. I, it could work. It's it's reducing the damage there, but the heavy attack doesn't it doesn't uh, impress me. Doom Roper scales. Fix an issue where the second uh set would not activate shield wall or some more set inactivated. Okay. Elf Bane. Fix an issue where the set was not properly uh, applying some, some tool tips. Increase the duration of this five seconds up from two. Okay. Engine Guardian. Fix numerous issues with the set's cooldowns and abilities are not uh, uh, abilities were. The sphere would cast. Fix an issue where the set would have lead the mortal realm into deep water while it was active. Essence Thief. This now price on light or heavy attacks instead of only light attacks. Fix an issue where this could proc off friendly uh, friendly targeted light attacks. I still don't think anyone's going to use Essence Thief. Eternal Hunt. Uh, fix an issue where this is considered damage over time instead of direct damage. Because this Eternal Hunt was the one that laid down the little green traps for people to run into. After you roll dodged. Uh, Galleran's Revenge. This set now requires 5 stacks to trigger down from 6. Increase the damage done to 9,630 up from 4,730. Added 1 second cooldown for applying stacks. Fix an issue where you... Uh, fix an issue where this set would fail to apply proper lightning or restoration staffs. This on the other side here. That was Galron's Revenge. When you, deal, uh, when you deal damage with light or heavy attack, you mark your target with revenge of the enemy for 15 seconds. After 6 sacks, which is now 5, so they're trying to make this as a burst uh, as a burst ability. It'd be interesting to see if this this works, but hmm, about to see. Ice furnace. Uh, this set no longer requires direct damage to chance to proc the trigger. Increase the damage to sixteen hundred uh sixteen hundred forty four from one thousand fifty six. Don't think it's gonna be great. I start fix an issue where the set could be considered damage, uh, direct damage instead of damage over time. That's good. Available mage. Fish issues where the set's damage amp was not properly applying heavy attacks. 
Note the minor availability now follows the tooltips and requires a fully charged heavy attack to apply. Yep. Infernal Guardian. This set now applies when you apply damage shields uh, to yourself and an ally. Update the tooltip to better reflect the rock conditions of the set and numerous issues where the not uh, would not obey its list of intended proc conditions. Okay, Lucky's Focus. Uh, this set now grants ma major evasion rather than rather than a unique buff. Sense. Uh, remove the healing protection. Uh, remove the healing reduction from the set. Reduce the area uh, the penalty from area effects down from fifteen percent down to 50, 25. Okay. Molokina, reduce the cost penalty from this ability to 8% down for 20%. That's a big one right there. Oh, that, that, that's a big one. So no longer, it's not 20% now, it's now 8%. I think that's going to become, um, become a pretty big meta with that. Uh, you could probably put that with, with New Moon and... Hmm. I don't know, it depends on what you're playing. If you're playing like a stamina build, you might want to use, uh... God damn it, Bone Pirate, just for the uh, stamina, stamina regeneration. Or you could be running... <sighs> Amber, maybe? Shackle Breaker? Shackle Breaker would work out pretty well. But that's a lot of damage for a very low, low penalty. Broker then. This set now properly mentions the cool, uh, its cooldown of the tooltips. Face an issue with light attacks, the ability would snare enemies. Face an e issue with the damage dealt from the set's attacks were highly inconsistent. Remove the proc chance effect from the set uh, item set. Okay, might might match, might make this a little bit better, but item pro like pet proc sets typically don't work well, just because pets don't work well in the general. Prisoners right, uh, prisoners rags. Face an issue where the set would not provide any the correct amount of magic while sprinting. Okay, uh, robes of the hist. This is an issue where the set was prop, uh, would fr uh, fail to properly activate while. Right. This is an issue where the set would fail to properly activate against snares and other certain circumstances. Hmm. Okay. See the mage. This no longer, uh, this no longer considers the first tick of da each damage of as. This no longer considers the first tick of each damage over time effect as dam as direct damage. Oh, so it was taking all the dots and thinking that it was direct damage to activate its proc. Okay, I got it. Uh, this set no longer require, requires critical strikes to proc. Reduce the duration for the cooldown from 5 seconds to 6 seconds. Okay. Shadow the Red Mountain. Update the tooltip to set to better represent its proc condition. Okay. Fear Venom. Fish an issue where it failed to proc from ticks of poison injection damage over time. Okay. Increase the damage uh, up to 9,660, up from 8,428. Wait a minute, the pro. Fix an issue where the sets failed to proc from any tick of poison. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Gotta take a look at that again. Sheer Venom. We deal damage with an execute ability, you infect an enemy. Deal 9,660 damage now. Poison over six seconds. So effect can occur once every six seconds. So if you use poison injection on a guy, the initial hit will, will cause this one to proc. And then I believe poison injection is 10 seconds and the the cooldown of this is six seconds. So you use poison injection, you hit him once, you activate that ability, and when that ends, automatically the next tick of poison damage is going to come on top of that, which was currently not doing that. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be nasty for PvP, I'm sure. Stormmaster, fix an issue with this uh this set would fail a proc on the overload despite being the thematically appropriate to do so. It, uh, increase the damage up to 1600 from 1300. Face an issue where this damage is considered to be a projectile rather than dam direct damage. Okay. Cruise of the Harbringer. 
The set now deals damage based on 6% of your max health rather than 4% of your current health. Okay. This effect uh, continues to deal damage regardless of the range of the attacker. Six damage to your max health. So if you're looking at a 45k Templar sitting out there, I do math, guys. For 45k Templar. Two thousand seven hundred damage, unmitigatable. Sorry, wrong window. That does, that still doesn't seem that much. Tormentor, uh, this set now properly works with explosive charges. Okay, Falcon Scoria, facing an issue where the set could proc off other procs. That's good to fix. Vestments or Orime. This issues where this uh, set would trigger off siege weapons. Yeah, we don't want that. Uh, Vicosa. This set now reduces the enemy's spell and weapon power by 2,608 instead of applying Major Maim. Increase the duration from 8 seconds down and reduce the cooldown to 12 seconds. So you could apply Major Maim and also reduce their spell and weapon power with this set. Well, that, that could be useful, but I don't know if it's going to make a major difference to that set. Way of Fire. Update the tooltip for better representative the proc condition. Wild Impulse. Fix the issue where the damage, the set's damage over time effect could not stack on multiple players. Wilder Green Arch. Fix an issue where, could, where this snare would apply would stack over other snares. Wrath of the Imperium. Fix an issue where the set would not apply, uh, was not properly granting the bonus of all three hits of force. Shock and his morphs. All right. So that's the major stuff there. Meat of that. Alliance, war, and PvP. So, folks who are fans of Battlegrounds, you hate long, you, you hate long waiting times for your Battlegrounds? You hate going against pre all the time? Guess what? You can now only solo queue in the battlegrounds. Yeah, you heard of that right. They're getting rid of the group battlegrounds. You can't do pre-made anymore. You have to go in solo. I don't know. I have mixed feelings about this. I like this in a certain way. I do hope that they will bring back group battlegrounds at some point. But what I would like to see happen is I'd like to see battlegrounds grow a bit more. Then as people get into it more and they want to start doing like pre-made stuff, that a separate queue would open up for those folks. Because I do have to admit, when you're trying to when you're trying to play solo, and you're facing folks that are pre and a pre-made, and you have folks that are just like randoms on your team, it's always a pain in the butt. This I think hopefully will help improve the state of battlegrounds as it is right now. Uh, they also they're also resetting everyone's MMR. So your matchmaking rank right now is going to reset with this patch. And this is all in preparation for Mid Meteor Mayhem, which I understand why they're doing this. So this should improve the this should improve the time waiting for this. It also means though that if you're running battlegrounds and you need to have a healer with you, you can't rely on it anymore. You gotta have a more balanced build. I also think that means that if you run a healer inside battlegrounds, you're gonna be loved by a lot of people more often. Our animation, da, 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 da. audio, fixing or issues of doors, monsters, crafting economy, fix issues of constructing, deconstructing multiple items at a time where we provide less inspiration and deconstruction than one at a time. Good. Uh, minor text adjustments to motifs, monster crates, fix an issue with the description of the, the cat. I'm still surprised that the crown crates they have not released what the what the chances are yet. I thought they had to do that for European. Uh the European stuff. 
I thought they passed that law there that said uh, anything that's like loot stuff, you have to always put the per the percent chance to get something. Maybe that hasn't been implemented yet. Multiple changes to dungeons and content. Exploration ionizations. Magic memory, mementos. Housing. Furnishings. Homes. Activity finder. Receiver ready check will not automatically grant, um, will now automatically cancel pending leave queue confirmation dialogue. Because nothing wor there's nothing worse than leaving the queue just as your group was about to form. Uh, fix an issue where the dungeons requiring champion points amount would not become immediately available after reaching the requirements and until relogging. Questing, UI. Also, the online taskbar and PC will now lighten up uh, with light sensitivity. Uh, ready checks combat occurred in game will not be focused. Yeah, so if you noticed while I was talking here, I had somebody else doing stuff here uh, while I was doing other stuff. This would light up when things happened. And yeah, it just tells you like, hey, there's a towel here. Hey, your ready check is up. So if you, one of the folks at alt tab while you're playing the game, it gives you a nice little notification that things are happening. Uh, fix an issue where the force lock uh, could chance, it could be more than 100%. Uh, fix an issue where the achievement category is cut off. Fix an issue with the tooltip. Yep. Alliance 4. Fix an issue with the battlegrounds. Team members position could indicators uh, appear overhead. Fix an issue where the campaign rule set name of the campaign was cut off. Crafting. Store. General. Uh, Gamepad pad mode. Help tooltips and all that good stuff here. So that's the PTS patch notes, guys. Interesting little changes here. I think the major stuff here, though, is the performance changes. The fact that it's going to be multi-cored on top of everything else now, that we're going to be looking at more changes that are... If you have a 64-bit PC and a good PC now, it should be optimized a bit better. Um, I, From what I could see, things were loading up faster. I didn't see too much hit on FPS, but again... We're on PTS. They don't have the, we don't have the numbers in PTS. We're not having the same server load on PTS, so it's hard to say if it's going to change a whole lot. But we'll take a look here in a minute here at some of this, and let's see if we can get a dungeon going as well. Folks watching on YouTube, hope you enjoy this little highlight. <laughs> 